Christine Armstrong with Exercise Astronomy. I'm in a little bit of sun today, so I gotta wear a visor so I'm not squinting so much. I thought you ought to know. So today's class will be a yoga class uh, geared with the main basic yoga poses. Uh, it will be somewhat of a flow and we'll be using the wall as a support and a chair as a support today. Please have your chair, a wall, blocks, and a strap available to you. Uh, and blankets as always. Uh, we may, you may need those to help you deepen your pose and improve the internal feeling of that pose. So today we want to think about how our body moves and using our brain and our intelligence to continue to improve that pose. There's no such thing as perfection. Do the best you can safely in your own range of motion. Not mine, not your neighbors. It's important that you stay with your movements and what feels good. If it hurts, back off. Tweak it, adjust it, retry. If it still is painful, stop that pose and move on to the next one or maintain Begin to gather yourselves, settle yourselves. You may sit in a chair or you may sit with your legs crossed in Svayakasana. And then slowly deepen your breaths as you inhale and exhale through your nose. Inhale, spread your ribs wide. Allow the abdominal wall to soften and not tighten but it needs to work. So as you inhale, expand through the diaphragm, lift your ribs, lift your top sternum, spread your collarbones wide, maintain that lift as you exhale. Again, breathing at your available breath space. Just listen to my words. As you inhale, expand your ribs wide, and then maybe lengthen a little bit, going a little higher, keeping that expansion as you exhale. Soft, smooth, gentle breaths to allow your body to relax and observe where you are today. Begin to start lifting your abdomen up towards your rib cage gently. And as you move up towards your rib, rib cage, continue to move up more towards your top ribs, lifting and expanding with each breath, with each inhalation. And on the exhalation, maintain that lift of the posture while allowing the shoulder blades and the tailbone, the back of the pelvis to slowly go downwards in a circular motion. Lifting up in the front, inhaling, and exhaling, grounding your pelvis down onto your side. Observe where you are. If you feel gripping anywhere or a heaviness on one side versus the other, see if you can make some adjustments so that you are somewhat more balanced. Today will be all about observation. Rest your palms, knuckle side down, palms up in your lap, and spread your collarbones a little more. This is a time for reflection and preparation for what's about to come. Take two more breaths. And release. Use your hands to bring your knees together. Plane flying overhead if you can't hear it. I can hear it if it's loud. And extend your feet outward, keeping your knees soft. If you don't need the support, I sit on support because I have tiger hip 
jobs for the city looks like. What for extended leg or staff pose? I do not need that much height. Bend the knees, hands behind you. Pressing down, I have my fingertips are pointing towards my buttock. As I press down, I roll my shoulders back and I lift my upper chest, keeping my knees bent and my feet together. As I exhale, I'm going to slowly straighten my legs, but I'm not just going to slam my legs down. I'm not just going to straighten the back of the knees. I'm going to press the back of the thighs down to see if the back of the thighs can make it down first. To lengthen and lift my chest. Continue that lifting action and that rolling action, descending the back of the shoulder blades down the back and then lifting and spreading the top front of the chest, the sternum, the collarbones, lengthen the back of the head, and then release. And then slowly come forward to a stand. Move your props, uh, move your blankets out of the way and have a chair or blocks nearby. I will show two variations. I will show an easier variation, and then I will show a more advanced variation. And sometimes I can show a transition in between. Again, you have to work at your own pace and what's best for your body. I always tuck my shirt in because I'm usually going upside down so just to maintain modesty. So standing in Tadasana, use, bring the insides of the edges of your feet together. Um, some people have a little more flesh in the thighs and that's okay. If you can't bring your feet all the way together, standing slightly apart, uh, the instructions are still the same. Do what is comfortable for you. Lift the toes up, spread the toes. Lengthen the toes away from you. Ball of the foot is still on the ground. And as I spread and lift my toes, I reach them forward and then slowly set them down. And then begin to feel the ground through your feet. Moving the weight forward towards the ball of the foot and then shifting the weight slightly back towards the heel of the foot. Make notice of which foot feels heavier inside of the foot, outside of the foot, front of the foot, back of the foot, right foot, left foot, doesn't matter, just be aware of that. And then we go into Tadasana, Mountain Pose, spread your collarbones wide, and then pull the tops of the thighs up towards the hip socket. So you're kind of lifting the kneecaps, but you're also lifting the tops of the thighs up into their hip sockets. And then you take that same forward motion using the abdomen and lift the abdomen. But I'm not tightening it, I'm not tightening it. I'm just lifting it. I'm trying to bring it up towards my ribs. I have my two pillars, my two strong columns, and you wanna try and feel those two strong pillars. As you lift higher and higher, expanding the chest, roll the collarbones back, lift the chest, roll your collarbones from the front to the back. So you can even lift the shoulders up, squeeze them together, Pull them down, reaching down with your fingertips. Extend your fingertips, and especially through the pinky side of the arm as you lift the chest. Tadasana. This helps you get rounded and centered so that you become ready for our positions. So now I want you to bring your hands forward, having your fingertips point forward, and then interlace your hands. And then press the hands forward so that you're opening the palms. The thumbs are pointing down and the pinkies are pointing up and you wanna to work towards a straight elbow. Bring the abdomen up and in and you feel how your body starts to collapse from there. So allow that collapsing at first, drop the chin, push away, and then inhale, lift the chin, spread the collarbones, and then begin to take it overhead squeezing the upper arms 
into the head, but depressing the inside edge of the shoulder blades. So the outside edge of the shoulder blades flares out, while the top inside shoulder blade creates space between the arms and the neck. Continue to work opening the palms and turning the palms towards the sky. And then release, but don't let go. Bring your palms back towards you. Pay attention to which pinky is on the bottom so you can change the inner legs. Stand tall, ground your posture, turn your hands inside out, push away, lift the abdomen. Don't forget you have a grounding going on. Feel the ground, feel Mother Earth. And then go ahead, drop your head, round your shoulders, stretch it away. And then lift your head, lift your chest, spread your collarbones, continue to squeeze the elbows tight and bring the arms overhead. Lifting the chest, lifting through the hips, reaching through the palms. And again, creating that space between your arms and your neck. I still struggle a little on this side. You can see the difference if you look from one side of my shoulders to the inside of the other. And then release. And then stand into Dasana. Take a breath. And then take your belt and we're going to throw it over your shoulder. So put it over your right shoulder. Stand with your feet slightly separated. We don't want to be working on balance. And take your right arm. I'm sorry, your left arm went backwards to you. And extend it so that the palm is forward. And reach it away. As I reach my fingertips away, now I'm going to roll my thumb down and then back, but the upper arm is still pointing in the same direction. So the only thing that's changed is my forearm and my wrist. And then I swing it back and I catch the belt. Now this is my uh, weaker shoulder. So you'll see a difference on both sides. And I catch my belt behind my back. And then I take my top arm and you extend it, stretch it up. I'm really reaching. I know you can't see my hand. I'll have to adjust my camera a little bit. And reach up with those fingertips. Keep turning the outside of the arm inward towards your face. So the back side of my arm needs to come forward towards my face. And then I keep the elbow point lifted. And I reach up with the elbow point. And now you can begin to work on your two hands coming closer together. Some of you will be able to reach your fingertips and touch your fingertips. If you're able to do that, you can try interlocking the first knuckle or the first digit of your fingers. Don't forget about standing tall. You're still into Dasana. You still need to be grounded to Mother Earth. So you're pressing down through the feet lifting up through the thighs, up through the abdomen, lengthen and bring that top right elbow in and up to create more space, opening that armpit. And you'll be able to see, I'll have a big difference between my two sides. So we lift the chest and now I can pull the band. So I can pull my strap to help bring the bottom arm up. Or if I can't get my hand down, I can use the strap to pull my hand down. So we can go either way with that just to create a little bit more space in the shoulders and works well for internal external rotation and rotator cuff issues. And then slowly release. Take a moment, stand into Dasana, grounding yourself. I'm going to make an adjustment on my camera here and then we'll switch the belt to the other side. Now it goes the other way. Now I even have a loop on the back of this with this belt. And I could have put my back hand in that if I felt like that was something I needed. So I will demonstrate that with this uh, pose. 
So the belt is on the other side. So now take your right arm and extend, have the palms facing downward and extend through the shoulder. Feel the length of the shoulder. And now put your thumb up and extend through your fingertips. And you can feel a lengthening that happens all the way from your midline, all the way to your pinkies. It's a mild fascial pattern. And then turn the thumb and palm backwards. Again, keeping the, the upper arm in the same position and then swing the elbow bent and reach back and clasp. Now, if I had wanted to use my loop, I can use the loop to support my bottom arm. Then you take your left arm and reach it up, stretch it up and really reach through the fingertips as much as you can. Lift the abdomen, lift the ribs, lift the hips. Everything's moving upward. And then keeping that back in outside arm moving towards the face, I bend my elbow and I reach back and I grab my belt. I continue to work my elbow around so that it comes right to the side of my head. And then I want to reach up with those elbow points to create space in that armpit, really to open that armpit. And now I can use that push and pull so I can pull down with my top arm to help move or and pull down with my bottom arm to move the top arm back more. Release your shoulders, release your upper trap. Take a moment and then pull up. Can you pull up on the back hand to get it to come higher up your back? And then maybe you can start working your hands towards each other. Lower ribs in, abdomen in, lift the chest, spread the collarbone, all those other things still apply. So that's where you use your intelligence. And then slowly release. So those are good shoulder warm-ups, um, and I highly recommend that you do them on a regular basis. So now we're going to go into three poses. We will be doing uh, Trikonasana. We will be doing Warrior Two, and then we will be doing Ardha Chandrasana or Half Moon. Uh, so half supports ready. I'm using a wall today, so I can use the wall as my teacher. If you don't have it, it's okay. Um, but I highly suggest if you have an opportunity, a bare wall is an amazing teacher for alignment and awareness of where you are. Now, for those of you that maybe struggle a little bit, I'm gonna place the chair so that the seat is very close to my right leg on the inside. So the seat of the chair is gonna be very close to my inside right leg. Otherwise I have a block, which I will keep close to the wall. And I move the chair so that it is about equal with my knee, with my knee bent. Okay, so you know where we're going. So practice that, have that set up. And then pause for a moment, standing in Tadasana, lifting the thighs, lift the abdomen, lift the chest, spread the collarbones, so many things, lengthen the neck, lengthen the back of the neck, and descend the back of the shoulder blades down the back, reaching down with your fingertips. This is your body's center of balance. You are standing directly on your plumb line. And then separate your feet. Again, aligning if you're using a chair, you're gonna align your knee with the chair. Otherwise with your block, you're gonna have the block also close to alignment of your knee. Toes are pointing forward. And I want you to really spread your legs. Really, really spread them. I start with bent knees. I'm close to the wall. My butt, I can touch the wall. I can bend my knees. I can use my feet to Press the outer edges of my feet down. And then I roll the weight more towards the back of the heel, the back outer edge. And then maintain the contact of both pinky side and the heel. I roll inward. 
to press the big toe mound down. At the same time, I wanna relax the groins and then slowly straighten my legs. Hands behind your hips, lift your chest, lengthen your chest, press to the edges of your feet. Your, your heels should be slightly out and your toes slightly in. Sorry, I should have said that in the beginning. Extend your arms, lengthen your neck, lengthen your neck, lift your head off your shoulders, stretch through your fingertips, stretch through your pinky side, especially, and then turn the left foot in and the right foot forward. But I'm still maintaining uh, facing forward towards my camera, even though my feet are turned the other way. Lift the chest, extend the fingertips. We're gonna go into triangle. So you're gonna take your left arm and place it on your hip and reach forward with the right arm to lengthen out the bottom part of the ribs first. We want the bottom part to lengthen. This will allow us to go a little farther. And you may place your hand on your support of the chair, which is wonderful. Starting here is a great place to start because now I can really start to work my pelvis. So my right thigh and my right foot, I have to ground that right big toe and turn the right inner thigh outward towards the back, towards the back side of my thigh. And then I can begin to lengthen my ribs as my right hip and my right sit bone move towards my left inner thigh. Lift the abdomen, lengthen the spine. You can use your chair. And again, you can come to a high block. But again, we want to keep the bottom ribs lengthened. We don't want to round out. We want to lengthen the bottom ribs. This keeps our spine in a better alignment. And then we can push through our feet, ground that right big toe, ground that right outer heel, and then press strongly through the back leg. And the left thigh is also spinning outward. Feel the hip grip. Extend the arm up to the ceiling, reaching up. So now I'm gonna have a light touch of my hands on my support. Very light, have the legs do all the work. Lengthen the head, lengthen the ribs, and then now just be in the pose for a moment and take a few breaths. Relax your shoulders. And then to come out, soften the front knee slightly, take that top arm and really reach back with it. Reach back, reach back, reach back. And that will help pull you up. Turn both feet forward and then turn to the left. So now my right foot comes inward. I have to move my chair. I do have my block in place. So the right foot is turned in, left foot is forward. And again, my ribs are pointing towards the camera, but my hips are turning away. So we want to lift the chest, lift the ribs, spread the collarbones, lengthen through the fingertips, ground your feet, left big toe, left outer heel, right outer edge, turn the thighs from the inside out, from the inner groin to the outer side forward. So they're rolling from the midline backwards towards the hips. Left hand on the, I'm sorry, right hand on the hip. Extend forward, extend forward, reach, reach, reach. Extending that bottom rib, lengthen out, lengthen out, lengthen out. Then hand either to your chair or your block or the floor. Some of you more mobile people have to be kind of careful because your hips will just let you plop right down, but actually it's better to start with a little support so that you can get your legs to engage in the pose. Again, turning thighs from inside out, lengthening, I just felt myself, I had to make an adjustment, lengthening my ribs, turning my left top ribs, or I'm sorry, right top ribs up to the ceiling, release your shoulders, and then extend the top arm Again, reaching the top arm so that you barely have any weight on your support. And you can migrate down your chair just as well. 
So if I'm on the top of my chair, I can begin to migrate down my leg to a block. Lengthen your spine and be in the pose. Use your hips. The left sit bone is moving towards the right inner thigh, turning the ribs, lengthen the abdominal wall. And then come out, soften the front knee and reach back. Turn the toes forward, excuse me, and then bring your feet together. Stand in Tadasana. Warrior two. This time I'm going to move my chair out of the way. I don't really need either one of those. If you want to attempt this, you can try and put your back heel to the wall, or you can put a block between you and the wall. So I take my left foot and I put the inner edge of the heel at the block. Right foot, I'm not too worried about yet. So then I bring my right foot forward and my right hip is touching the wall lightly, right? But now I can really use that back foot so I can lift up on the toe. So I'm lifting on the ball of my left foot. And then as I lower it down, I bring it as close to the wall as I can and I press to the outer edges of my foot, extending through the thigh and rotating the thigh from the midline out to the outside. Same action. Then for the front leg, I'm leaning just gently against the wall, but I'm gonna try and come off of it and make my pinkies touch the wall instead because now my chest has to lift and spread which gives me more space. And then as you bend your front knee, think about bringing the front right sit bone towards the back of the knee. So to help you, you can lift the heel a little bit so you can get a, the front heel, lift that front heel, get the feel of that action. And then as you press the heel down, slowly move that right sit bone towards the right knee, the back of the knee. Lengthen the head, extend through the fingertips. Now the back foot's not done. Press strongly through the outer edge and rotate that left thigh up towards the sky. Feel that left hip grip to do the job. Both hips are working. My, my front leg, my right hip is working really hard to turn my knee, making sure that that front knee can get to that right angle and also not fall inward. It needs to point outward. The kneecap needs to point towards the second and third toe, maybe even the fourth or fifth toe if you can generate that much strength. And then release, reaching back, turn your feet forward. Set yourself up so your opposite foot can hit the wall if you're able. If not, that's okay. You can just do it without. So I place my, my right heel against the block at the wall. And I bring my right left foot forward so that I have an angle of my back foot. And again, lift the heel and then press the outer edge of that heel down, but keep it in contact with that block. And then again, take the front leg, bend the knee slightly, turn your ribs so that you are um, I have my hands touching the wall, and now I can lift my front heel and feel the action of that sit bone moving towards my knee. So I can lift the heel, feel the inner sit bone move towards the back of the knee. And then as you bend your knee to that right angle, have that sit bone move more and more towards the knee. Check your knee, make sure that front knee is tracking towards the second, third toe, maybe fourth toe. You can turn your knee out, turn your hips on. Press strong front toe, 
So the left foot, big toe mound, left outer heel, turn that hip on. And then the back leg, press strong through those back metatarsals, that fifth toe edge all the way to the outer heel. Lengthen the spine, stretch with the arms, release, come back, feet together, Tadasana. It's warm here, I'm gonna grab a drink of water. Stay in Tadasana. Now we'll repeat, standing in Tadasana, separate your feet, turn your left heel in, right foot forward, left heel is at the wall, if you're able, do all the little tricks that we did, see if you can remember what we do, lift the heels, find the position, get where you need to be, lift the chest, flow the front, Sit bone towards the back of the knee. Turn the hips on. Turn the knee. Turn, make sure their knee is tracking properly. It should be number one, the shin is perpendicular. And number two, the knee is not falling towards the inside. The knee needs to for, fall towards the outside of the hip. Lengthen your spine. Separate your groin. Lift your chest. And now lengthen your shoulders, depress the shoulder blades down the back, and then reach back strongly with that back hand. So I'm really reaching to help lengthen my shoulder. And then I slowly turn my head and look to the right. Looking over the front hand, lift the abdomen in and up, and be there. Very strong, powerful pose. And then release, turn your feet forward, release your arms, inhale, exhale, raise the arms, turn the opposite direction. So left foot forward, right foot in, right heel at the wall or at the brick, right fingertips or both finger pinky toe tips <laughs> touching the wall, tongue tied. Oh good, lift your chest, lengthen your shoulders. And then flow that front knee, press into that back heel, press into that front inner ball of the foot towards the outer heel. Knee is tracking correctly. Check it, make sure your knee is tracking properly. Don't let it fall inward. Allow the pelvis to separate. Allow the left sit bone to move away from the right sit bone. Lift the abdomen. Lengthen the spine, lengthen the neck. Reach back with your right hand really strongly to feel the length in the shoulder. And then exhale and turn and look over your left hand. Press strongly through your feet. This is a powerful pose. Use your legs. Get to that right angle. Do the best you can. Turn those hips on then release and turn forward. Bring your feet together, Tadasana. I'm on interesting pavement and it's messing with my balance today, which is okay. So lifting the thighs, lift the chest, lift the head, lengthen through the shoulders. Good. And so now we're going to go into half moon. And this is another great way to have use of a chair because the chair can really make a big difference for you. So I take my chair and I place it so that the seat is facing me. Uh, and I can use the backrest of the chair to start to make this pose more doable. So you're gonna turn and face the chair. Stand as tall as you can. Go back to your Tadasana, go to your mountain pose. Lift your head, lift your chest. And then bending only at the waist, place your hands on your seat. Now from here, can you make a tabletop? Can you make your back flat? 
Spread your sit bones apart from each other. Ground your toes. Lift your head. Or I'm sorry, lift your chest, but don't look forward. Like our tendency is to want to see where we're going and that's too much strain on the neck. So we're going to keep the head in a more neutral position. And then from here, can you continue the bend at only the hips, not at the back, and allow yourself to maybe sink down to your forearms. Pull the thighs up into the hips and lift the abdomen away from the floor. This is just in preparation for the hip hinge that has to happen for half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. And so then I press up and now we're gonna take our chair and I'm gonna turn it so that the, again, the seat is where we were when we started our uh, triangle pose. So I have the back of the seat towards the inside of my knee, but this time I'm gonna move back a little bit because I need the space to be able to go into my half moon pose, okay? I also have my block, I don't know if you can see it, but I have my block right at the wall underneath the chair so that if I'm ready for a transition to go to my block, I can. So we begin with our legs separated in a more modified triangle. You don't have to go quite so wide. Extend the arms, lift the chest, spread the fingertips wide, lift the abdomen, press your feet apart. And then I'm gonna bend into warrior two. We just did this. Again, allowing the sit bones to flow towards the knee, lift the chest, extend through the fingertips. And now I have to make my transition. So I don't wanna to lose too much of this chest rotation. So I don't wanna take my eyes, but you do need to see where you're going. So do a quick glance and then reach for that surface. And as you reach for the surface, your weight comes forward onto the bent knee. And as you straighten the bottom knee, you lift the top knee. You can start with your hand on your hip, your top arm hand on your hip and hand on the chair. Now work on this top leg, turning the toes slightly downward, lengthen through the abdomen, and then you can extend the arm up. Now at the wall, this is a lovely pose because I have the support of the chair, I have the support of the wall, my balance feels good and I can continue to work on opening the top hip. So my goal is to take my left butt cheek and move it towards the wall. The back inner heel is extending, the top left arm is reaching. And then to come out, I wanna maintain that lift in my chest. So I soften the front knee and reach back with the back leg, come to triangle, and then rise. Bring yourself together, stand into Dasana, catch your breath. Take a few moments to allow yourself to settle. Bring your chair to the other side, have your block ready. This time I'm gonna to go to my block. So I'll start on my chair, but then I'm gonna take it up towards my block. So I'll put my block more visible. This one needs to move. So separate your feet. Again, you don't have to go very wide. I need the move because of that stuff here. Separate your feet. Turn your toes, mild trikonasana, nice and easy, not a hard one. And then soften that knee, reach for your surface, but keep those left ribs or right ribs pointing up towards the ceiling. And then as you begin the transition, the weight comes forward onto the front leg, hand goes to your support and you can lift your leg. Now here, I know you can't see my hands, but I'm gonna transition, I'm gonna to move towards my block. So I wanna create the same motion. So now I have my block at the wall. I'm in my pose, I have my top hand on my hips and I lengthen to the inner heel of my top leg. Move the head back towards the wall if you have it. But if you don't, imagine there's a wall there. Maybe soften that front knee slightly, turn the knee out slightly, and then straighten it again. 
And then can you extend the upper arm up towards the ceiling and stretch between the two arms. You shouldn't have a heavy resting on the bottom hand. It should be a light rest. Again, you wanna move those right hip back. So the right butt needs to come towards the wall as you open up the left groin. And then to come out, soften the knee, slowly release, step back and step together for Tadasana. Now grab your belt and if you need uh, if you need a blanket for heights, grab the blankets for heights. I will grab a few. I need the height. And I want to make sure my camera is adjusted properly. Yes. You also may want to have your belt nearby. And then have a seat. and have your legs extended out forward in Dandasana. Now I am sitting on some support um, and I have my sit bones are on the support and my pelvis front bone is on. Women need to have a little more support for their pelvic pubic bone, but the most of my back of my thighs are off the blanket. Press through your hands and lift your chest. Spread the back of the thighs downward. Extend through the inner heel, inner groin. Lengthen your spine. Keep that lift in your spine. And then walking the hands forward, keep your chest lifted. And you might not go very far. You might only go a small way. And that's okay. Use your belt. Wrap your belt around your metatarsals of your feet or the ball of your foot. And then reach forward with your hands, but keep your elbows straight and you'll feel how your back rounds as you reach for it. So now we want to turn the shoulders on. So we want to plug the shoulders in or I pinch my shoulder blades together or attempt to behind me. And I can push in the strap with the ball of my feet. And I can lift my chest better, spread my collarbones more as I push into the strap. And then release, walk your hands a little farther down. Press into the strap with your feet, pull with your hands. Try to retract those shoulder blades back, pull them back. Lift the chest, lift the chest, lift the chest. Keep the lift of the chest as you slowly make your way down. And then at the last second, Allow your head to just fall, but softly lifting the abdomen up off the thigh, allowing the sit bones and the back pelvis to drop back towards the floor while you lengthen out from the top of the pelvis to the ribs, to the spine, all the way through the top of the head. Breathe. Feel where the breath goes. And then just come to a tall seated position again. And now bend your right knee and bring the heel as close to your buttock as you can get it. And you'll notice that my knee will fall out a little bit to the side, right? This is easier to do. So I have to work a little harder to keep my knee pressing closer towards my rib. And I am on some height, which makes it a little bit easier for me. So I do recommend a little height when you're learning this. As I begin to work my feet a little more onto the ground, I'm gonna come forward more onto my foot. And I rock, I rock. Little rock so that I'm putting more weight on this bent knee. Put more weight on that bent foot. If you have knee problems, you can take your belt. This is a quite a long belt, but I can make a zigzag loop with it. And I can place that between my knees. 
so that as I get into that deeper position, if I need more space in the knee, I can pull the belt. This will allow me to get my heel farther back. So you might start with your heel far away and it's tough on the knees, right? It's, it feels uncomfortable. So we wanna kind of work the toe, lift the heel, lift the ankle, working your way back, move the heel back and then pull on the belt. Allow both sit bones to settle down. And then taking your left, I'm sorry, taking your right hand, you're gonna reach through. Left hand is gonna come behind you. I'm gonna reach through and I'm gonna reach forward for the inside edge of my forward leg. Reach for the inside and then feel how that knee wants to drop outward. So bring the knee in, keep your head in neutral. And now work the rotation of your top ribs. So your right ribs are moving forward and your left ribs are moving back to rotate your body around, pulling the knee in tight, weight through both sit bones, maybe catch the outside left foot, and then release. Extend both legs. If you have grumpy knees, take your belted strap with you, place it in the other knee, bend the knee, get the foot as close to the buttock as you can, and then saddle your sit bones down. And again, if you have knee problems, use the strap. It's right in the crease of my knee as I push forward with my hands to create more space in my knee. It's a wonderful little technique. Also, if you have little glitches in your hip, you can do the same thing with your fist. I place my fist right up against my hip bone and right up against my thigh bone. So my pinky side is touching the thigh, my thumb side is touching my hip, and then I press the thigh away. I push the thigh down and out, down and out, down and out, a little distraction for the pelvis. And then I can come back and see if that catch has improved. If it ha doesn't go away, uh, that's something you want to work on. So I would suggest if you have a little catch in your hips that you work on just creating that space and don't take this any farther. You're only going to cause more problems. So now take your left hand, put it behind you so you can sit up straight. You'll feel how the right side or left side turns inward. Press the inner left knee towards your left elbow to help bring your ribs around. And then can you come forward and catch your foot? Now, if you can't, again, you can use your belt. Either one of these is appropriate. Allowing that top knee to move back and the ribs to move around. So now I'm having my left ribs are moving forward and my right ribs are moving back and I'm much tighter on this side. So I can use my belt to work my way down. Hug the knee in towards the ribs, sit tall, don't slouch, no twisting and slouching is allowed. Good, and then release. Sit in Dandasana, sit tall, hands behind, lift your chest, pause. And then take your right hand, grab the right inner knee, and you can feel there's a big hanging tendon right there. Get a hold of that tendon, pick it up, move it back. So I'm moving it up and back. And now I want to eventually go down and back. So I move it back, I move it back, do it three or four times. Just bring that knee back behind you, pull with the arm. And then on the last one, hook the inside and lower the outer edge towards the ground. I like to point my feet forward and my foot comes to my midline. Okay, so then now here we have the foot is flexed, pushing the knee away, pushing the inner thigh away, and I'm going to turn towards my straight leg and I lift my chest. I push down in the ground to lift my chest and now turn your body so it's facing over that straight leg. 
and then make sure that the weight is balanced on the middle of the heel. The foot likes to roll out. Some people it likes to roll in. You need to be on the center of your heel as you lift your chest and then taking your right hand, reach forward. Can you clasp either onto the outer knee, the outer shin, or the outer foot, whichever works for you. And at the same time, I'm extending the right knee and the right outer hip. The right outer knee is moving away while my groin is releasing on the left to wrap around and have the left outer hip grip. Lengthen the spine and then slowly release. Use your hands to bring your knee up and extend the right leg. Repeat on the left, pull the knee up, wrap the inner heel, set it down. Foot is in midline, in line with the midline. Again, we can pump knee. Let's do five pumps, moving the knee back, move the knee back, keep driving it back and then set it on the floor. And again, the action is that there is a lengthening on the inner thigh, but, and a lengthening on the bent knee inner thigh, but that the outer leg is lifting towards the hip on both sides. So there's an extension in the middle and a connection in the outer hip. So it's probably too much information. So <laughs> begin to turn your ribs. I always go too deep, I'm sorry. Uh, lengthen your spine first. Make sure you've got equal weight on both sit bones and turn your ribs so that they're facing the forward straight leg. And again, center that front foot so that the heel, middle of the heel is on the ground, not the inner or the outer. And then reach forward with your left hand any amount. So you might reach to your knee and again, I work on extending through the inner groins on right and left, and then contracting the outer hips to create more space as I bring my ribs around. Both sit bones on the ground. And I just kind of slowly work my way down. I don't go crazy, but I keep my chest lifted as much as I can. And I keep the weight grounded as much as I can until I can't do it anymore. And this side is much tighter today for whatever reason, you know, I don't know why, uh, but it's definitely tighter than normal. Lift the abdomen up off the thighs that will allow you to get deeper. And then just be in the pose for a moment. And then release. There's sirens going on in the background. So just in case you hear it, Bring your legs forward, extending the heels. So now for a little twisting, I want you to take a chair and I'm gonna turn my chair and this is not my preferred chair, but it's what I got today. So I take my chair and I'm gonna sit in my chair sideways. Actually, I have a card table. I can look at my card table. Cheers, I had those. No, we're okay. No, you're good. I think you all know me well enough. I just didn't grab this, which I probably should have prior to. So now I have a good card table chair. So I'm gonna sit sideways in my card table chair. So I have my right side to the back of the chair, or yeah, my right shoulder is to the back of the chair. And I'll look down and are my knees equal? Check your knees. And then because of the tilt of a lot of chairs, I want you to ground more towards the outside buttock. Don't tip towards the inside, ground more towards the outside. And then bring your right arm back to the back corner of the chair and roll your shoulder under. And you'll feel as soon as you do that, it lifts your front ribs. Keep the lift of that front ribs as you begin to place the other hand 
on the back of the chair. I like normally to keep the nose in line with my sternum so that as I deepen my rotation, my head stays with the midline of my body. And then at the last minute, I'll allow my head to do a complete rotation. So don't let your head get ahead of you. So press down into your hands, push into the chair. And as you push, you'll feel a lift of the shoulders. Spread your collarbones really wide. And then begin to turn your ribs from left to right. So you're moving them around. You're bringing your left ribs more forward towards the chair. Ground through the outer edge of the outside leg. Keep an eye on your knees. Don't let them get ahead of each other. And then press down into the chair a little more to lift the chest. Inhale, lengthen the spine, lengthen the head. And exhale, deepen the rotation. And think about moving your abdomen from right to left. Your ribs are moving the opposite direction from left to right. Keep pulling those left ribs around. Move the abdomen away from that. Press down into the chair. Maybe you can place that back arm on the back seat of the chair. Press down, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. And on the last one, move your head. So inhale, lengthen the spine. And then exhale, turn your head and look as far as you can. Keeping a lifted spine, lifted abdomen, shoulders are cutting in, spine is straight. Exhale, release. Turn your face the other direction. Place the left hand in the back of the seat. As you feel that, bring the ribs around. Place the right hand on the back of the seat. Press down with your hands. Feel what happens to your shoulder blades as you press down. They kind of cut in at the bottom. Keep that same spreading of the collarbones and cutting in of the shoulder blades. Lift again, don't let your head get ahead of your, of your sternum. Make sure your knees are equal. Press down in the chair, lengthen the spine. Move the ribs from right to left. And then move the abdomen from left to right. Continue to cut the shoulder blades in. Inhale, lengthen. Lengthen the neck, lengthen the back of the head. Exhale, deepen the rotation, pressing into the chair, cutting the shoulder blades in. Press down, lift and lengthen, inhaling and exhale, deepen. Maybe you can bring your hand lower, the back hand lower. Again, moving the abdomen from left to right and the ribs right to left. And take a big inhale here. Exhale, turn and look over your shoulder. One more breath. Shoulders in. And then slowly release. And now it's Shavasana time. So Shavasana is actually one of the hardest poses. Those of you with uh, backs that are a little troublesome might benefit from the support of the chair. There's several different options for setting up. I like to have a little padding. And you'll want support for your head. This is a demonstration for Shavasana in using the chair to support you. My legs are a little short. I would probably put some height under my hips so that I can release my legs into the chair to lengthen my spine. That's one option. Or you can take your blanket. I open them wide. I do a triple fold. Some of you have different blankets. This is about the height of my fist, maybe a little less. And I lay that on the floor and I have a gap. And then again, support for my head. Just showing alternatives for Shavasana. 
keeping my knees bent. I lower myself down equally right and left until the tips of my shoulder blades are on the edge of that blanket. And then I move my head accordingly. Your head support should only be on your head and not on your shoulders. And I'm against the wall, so I won't be able to extend both arms. But then I would extend both arms out to the side, lengthening my legs, driving the inner heels away, and relaxing, allowing my legs to fall where they like. So pick your preferred Shavasana position and begin to deepen and soften your breath. Breathe in through your nose. Pause for a moment and then exhale through your nose. If you have a lot of pain or discomfort today, exhale through your mouth with pursed lips. Not quite like you were blowing a candle out, but a gentle. At your own pace, slow your breath down and begin to go inward and watch your breath. Watch your breath as you inhale, follow it down into your body, down into your lungs. And then as you exhale, maintain the lift of your ribs, soften your abdomen, soften your diaphragm. Inhaling, expanding the ribs, front to back, side to side top to bottom, a gentle pause, and then a slow exhalation. Soft, smooth inhalation, expanding, Pausing, giving it a hug. And then as you exhale, let your body go. Keep following your breath with each exhalation. Allow your body to relax. A little bit more. Maintain that softness and that spreading of the ribs. And then as you exhale, let go. If you find that there is a place that's just stubborn, I'll have them. Send your breath to that location. As you inhale, inhale towards that stubborn spot. It can even be in your toes. And then as you exhale, see if you can get it to relax just a little bit. Watch your breath as you go deeper, relaxing your face, soften your throat, soften your shoulders, soften your abdomen, soften your hips, move that down to your thighs. Knees, calves, feet, 
Release the palm or the bottoms of your feet. Yeah, I guess they are the palms of your feet. Soften the skin on the palms of your hands. Watching your breath as you inhale and exhale. We're going to do five cycles of Veloma one, which is three inhalations with a pause in between. Start at the bottom of your ribs, move towards your armpits, and then up to your ears. So complete your next cycle of your breath, inhaling, lift the chest, lift the sternum, Exhale, maintain that lift. Inhale through the nose, bottom ribs, one, two, pause. Inhale, up to the armpits, one, two, pause. Inhale, fill your lungs all the way to the top of your ears, pause. And then slowly exhale, maintaining the lift of the ribs, but letting everything else go. Inhale, bottom ribs, pause. Inhale, up to the armpits, pause. Inhale, all the way, fill yourself up, pause. Exhale, either through the nose or first lips. Spread the columns. Inhale, bottom ribs, one, two, pause. Inhale, mid ribs, armpits for two, pause. Inhale, fill your ribs, all the way to the top, pause. And exhale. If you feel any gripping or you're struggling for breath, go back to a normal breathing, let go. Next round, ignore my words otherwise. Inhale, on ribs, one, two, pause. Inhale, armpits. Pause, inhale all the way to the brim, fill it up to the top, exhale, two more, inhale, bottom ribs, pause, inhale, up to the armpits, pause, Inhale, up to the brain, pause, give it a hug, and then let it go. One more. Inhale, bottom ribs, expand. Inhale, up to the armpits, expand. Inhale, all the way to the brain, all the way up to the tops of the ears. Hold. Give it a hug. And then let it go. And now just a normal breath cycle. Soften your breath. Let it all go. Let go of the breath. Let it flow the way it's supposed to.
And now you can rest in this lovely Shavasana, feeling the vibrations from Veloma One Breathwork Pranayama. Allowing your body to maintain its softness and relaxation. Stay as long as you like. Namaste.